I thought it'd be fun to do it a little bit differently this time, and I had some time to kill him. St. Louis. Oh, that just, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work at all. So the point is, another business trip, another hotel session. And this time we're gonna do a song. It's one called Ramblin' Rover, and I've been playing it with the band a lot lately. It's a Scottish song, and I first heard it from the singing of Andy M. Stewart and Silly Wizard, probably 20 or 30 years ago. It's a great standard song that everybody does. We do it a little bit differently, which I'll come back and kind of touch on at the end, but just kind of give you the basic melody here. standard. That's what most people will play. Now I'm going to show you another way to play it, which is how I've been doing it recently, and then I'm going to go back and break down some of those bits and pieces and kind of show you how I got from point A to point B, and see if you want to incorporate some of those as you're playing it. So here's another way to play it. weeks, making it into a bit more of a jig feel than the song, which is what we use in the instrumental. So how do we get from point A to point B if you're so inclined? Well, here's a couple of things that I would add to just the basic melody. So rather than could play, changing up the rhythm a little bit. Also, if you wanted to be a bit more traditional, but still work in a couple of those little little tricks, like in that case, sort of a double cut on the E. Next section, basic melody. Or, again, working in some of that rhythm so that that was, got a, a roll on the A and then a short roll on the B. Simpler version. using a slide right there. don't have to do all of these things, you can just sort of pick and choose, and that's a nice, easier way to do it, that little section. Next bit. Now, in that part there, I am dropping below the range of the whistle. You could play the whole thing up the octave if you're so inclined. I'm trying not to do that here because I am in a hotel, and I don't want to hurt anybody's ears, which this may very well if I jumped into that upper octave. Also not a problem to drop below, and I, in fact, I do that a lot when I'm playing this on stage, so. So you could do a roll there to finish that phrase. You could do some slides in the upper part. And I do drop down to the A instead of the B. That's one of those little changes that we made when we were playing it, and it just kind of worked out that way. Take that for what it's worth. And finish. Same thing as we did in the beginning. Phrase ends very similar with that roll. And I do that popping thing a lot. I've demonstrated that in a lot of videos, going from B to A, earthquaking that top finger off. Right, nice and quick.
I also will do a roll followed by a cut. That's probably more of a bagpipe thing, if I remember right. That's one I just think it has a nice effect, particularly on, on this whistle. It just really jumps out on that lower range. So to finish the phrase. That's how I like to play this song. Hope you guys dig it. I know it's kind of a weird setup. Hopefully the sound isn't terrible. Fingers crossed. See you all in the next one. Cheers.